it's really crazy. I don't know how these people, like, you know, these big stars, they can burn through hundreds of millions of dollars. You know? They get, they get a huge amounts of money from their success, and then it seems they always die, like, in bankruptcy. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Yeah, it is pathetic. Because they had the chance to do something really wonderful with all that money and that fame and influence, but they didn't do it. You know, we have, we don't have any money and we don't have any fame really, you know. Uh, but whatever little bit of influence that we have in this world, we're trying to apply it to uh, get people to engage in Krishna consciousness. You know, so, uh, you know, I, I wish I had more influence than we would be more effective in our mission, but oh well, we use whatever Krishna gives and uh, make the best use of a bad bargain. Uh, material life is a bad bargain. It's a bad deal. It's a temporary existence ending in death. So the best thing we can do while we're here is engage in Krishna's service. And that means helping other people become Krishna conscious. I'm going to tell this, I'm going to say this over and over again until you get sick and tired of hearing it. The best devotional service is to help other people understand this science. Even if it's just passing out little stickers that say, 2012 is coming, esotericteaching.org. Huh? Or change your consciousness, change your world, esotericteaching.org. Huh? Well, what was the other one somebody else suggested today? There's another one. Yeah. Do you remember what it was? What it was? My brain is like a sieve tonight. I'm just like, I'm just too, too blissed out to hardly even sit straight. <laughs> oh. It was king of all knowledge. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this esoteric teaching, I just quoted that from Bhagavad Gita, and I put uh, in... Uh, substituted for, the, instead of this knowledge is the king of education, it said the esoteric teaching, this esoteric teaching is the king of all knowledge, king of education, uh, the most secret of all secrets. And because it gives uh, realization of the self by direct perception, it's the actual aim of religion, the perfection of religion. It's a nice verse from Bhagavad Gita. I think it's 914 or something like that. Anyway, uh, yeah, we could use like that, print up little cards, you know, just give them out to people. Because preaching is a numbers game. This is what everybody seems to miss in the beginning. They think that because I have some relationship with this other person, and I'm interested in Krishna consciousness, if I give them the information, they'll also be interested in Krishna consciousness. And guess what? It almost never works. <laughs> Almost never works. I remember what I made one friend of mine a devotee. Out of all the musician friends and people that I knew, when I became a devotee, I, I looked up this guy that I had played in a band with. Well, actually, we had a flute duet. We used to go around in restaurants and just play these little pickup gigs on Sunday morning brunch and like that in restaurants, we'd play like Bach and Mozart flute duets and stuff like that. It was pretty cool. But uh, I had to preach to him for three days straight. I mean, almost literally from the minute we got up in the morning all day long until the end of the day at night. He was living in a tent out in the woods doing the sadhu thing. And so uh, I went out there and I just preached and preached and preached and read to him Bhagavad Gita and all of that. And it wasn't until we got to talking about Varnashram Dharma. Varnashram Dharma is what made him a devotee. He said, really? Oh, that's the coolest thing I ever heard. And I was like, huh, what? <laughs> you don't care about love of God? No, but Varnashram, that's great. That's cool. Let's do it. And he came with me back to L.A. 
I was editing Srila Prabhupada's Chaitanya Charitamrita at the time. And he came down and he, he joined the temple in L.A. and he became a devotee. He's dead now. He OD'd on barbiturates. So uh, it's very, very difficult to find a person who is actually qualified to be a first-class devotee of the Lord. You have to go through thousands and thousands of people. You probably don't know anybody. You probably don't have anybody in your family or your friends or at your school, unless you go to some huge major college or university uh, that would want to become a devotee of the Lord. So what do you have to do? You have to reach out to a very broad circle of people, a bunch of people that you don't even know, and give them the chance, uh, and leverage the, the website, because the website is full of very good quality material that we've been working on for years, and gradually by testing and, stat, and stats and like that, we've refined this material until it actually works. It actually makes devotees. Uh, but you have to have thousands of people go through it before you make even one devotee. So the best thing is to just hand out, or to promote the, uh, the URL of the site. And you have to do it in a favorable way. Don't spam people. Uh, don't try to trick people. You know, like, don't go in the library and put cards in every book in the library, you know, or the bookstore downtown, you know. Don't do that. That's cheating. But stand outside someplace where there are lots of people going by and just hold the card here, offer the card. And if they want it, they'll take it. You don't have to push it on them. You don't have to trick them. You don't have to try any funny business. Just say, hey, look, here, here you go. Huh? Or have, print up little stickers with esotericteaching.org and some slogan, you know. Put them on bus stations and, you know, just put them everywhere. Bumper yeah, bumper sticker. You can get those custom. Huh? There's uh, websites where you can get custom bumper stickers printed up for a few bucks. Put it on your car. Huh? Let people see it. So you don't know. That's the thing. Even I cannot tell who is going to become a devotee. It's not possible. Uh, you just have to let them decide. You give them the chance, give them the information, connect them to the site, and then they do what they want to do with it. You have to recognize that everyone has free choice. Everyone has free will. Everyone has the free will. Our free will is very tiny. The limit of our free will is whether or not we're going to engage in the devotional service of the Lord. At every moment, we have that choice. If we choose to engage in the devotional service of the Lord, well, then everything else is more or less planned out because we have a particular mood of service, we have a particular eternal identity, and then there are, you know, the ten stages of devotional service, and we're going to go through those like every other devotee ever did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so that is pretty well, you know, planned out. Once we make that choice, and once we make the choice that, no, I don't want to engage in devotional service, well, then we have our karma and the three modes of material nature and the various divisions of time. And uh, so then from that point on, our existence is pretty well planned out. The real freedom that we have is the ability to decide do I want to be engaged in devotional service or not? Which really roughly equates to, do I want to be happy or not? Uh, because being in touch with Krishna is happiness. Uh, we had a little example of that earlier tonight. And being separated from Krishna is suffering. Everybody knows what that's like already. Uh, so we don't want that. We want to be, de we want to be happy. We want to be devotees. So we choose to engage in devotional service 24 hours a day. Uh, that is the most sane, rational choice you can make. To choose to be separated from Krishna is the same as choosing to drink poison 
Well, why would anybody drink? Here's a glass of milk and here's a glass of poison. Huh? Which one are you going to drink? Duh. <laughs> so here you can go this way and you can be happy, or you can go this other way and suffer. I mean, it's, it's, it's not a very difficult choice. But it's still amazing how many people choose to suffer. Why do they choose like that? Because of these anarchists. Uh, because they're cursed by Amaraj. Or they have too much opulence and they don't want to risk it. Or, um, aparada uta, they have some offenses. And they're suffering on account of offenses. We went over the offenses in chapter 8 of uh, Nectar of Devotion. There's a long list of offenses. The offenses are uh, the ten offenses to the holy name. And then 